Hi, everyone. My name is Professor Peter Nash from Griffith University in beautiful downtown Brisbane. And Jack has asked me to report for Room Now from ULA 2023 Milan about what's the latest in Jack and TIC2 inhibitors. And uh, the one of the abstracts I've selected is OP0139, which is looking at the efficacy and safety of a selective BDK inhibitor called elsibrutinib combined with or separate to upadacitinib in two doses in the management of lupus. Jack inhibition in lupus has become very topical. We know ducravacitinib, the TIC2 inhibitor, showed efficacy and is moving forward in phase three studies. We're doing those. And baricitinib didn't mainly due to very high placebo response, which gave it no chance of showing efficacy, even though it had almost identical SRI4 response to ducravacitinib, which had a very low and normal kind of placebo response, allowing it to show significance. Anyway, this particular study looked at, it was a phase two double-blind placebo control randomized study, and they had 340 patients, 41 patients, a decent number. They looked at the BDK inhibitor by itself, they looked at 30 milligrams of upadacitinib by itself. They looked at placebo on background of standard of care for everybody, anti-malarials, low-dose prednisone, immunosuppressives, et cetera, but patients were still having active disease. And then they compared that to the BDK inhibitor plus 15 milligrams of UPA, so-called low-dose, and Ellsbrutinib with the 30 milligrams of upadacitinib, if you like, the higher dose. And the primary endpoint at week 24, which to me is a little early in lupus studies for the reasons that the pathogenic antibody can last months and really it's the second 24 weeks that's important in these studies. Um, and they looked at, 20, at SRI4 plus prednisone, 10 milligrams or less. They didn't mandate that it should go down to a low dose like five milligrams, which is one way of making sure the placebo response is not over the top. Uh, and they were able to show a number of things in this study. Firstly, the BDK inhibitor by itself was not effective. The lower dose of upadacitinib was not effective. And importantly, whether it was SRI4, Bicla, LL-DAS, or the combined SRI4 plus prednisone dose, there was no added benefit to adding the BDK inhibitor to the upadacitinib. This study actually compared high-dose combo versus um, UPA by itself versus placebo. And um, no benefit in adding the extra drug, but did show some nice efficacy of UPA to sitinib in lupus, particularly the classy index, a good response for uh, skin as well as for joints. So if you and I that have to treat not a lot of renal lupus nephritis because the uh, nephrologists have stolen those in our part of the world, not in cerebral lupus, but the kind of typical lupus you and I have to see, which is skin and joints and maybe some pleuropericarditis, mucocutaneous ulceration, upadacitinib 30 milligram showed nice efficacy in those domains. There wasn't an issue of venous thromboembolism, smallish numbers, short term, can't really comment on safety. They need longer term open label safety to give us all the details but certainly another jack, which is showing efficacy in lupus, but you have to use the higher dose. That's more zoster, more risk of opportunist infection, more issues possibly with VTE, MACE, et cetera, that needs to be sorted out, although not showing up in the rheumatoid long-term comparative clinical trials at this stage. So thank you for your attention. This question of Jackson lupus looks very interesting and we look forward to developments in the future. Thanks for your time.